What smells around here? Oh, live. Unfortunately, I do not have a little nice little handkerchief. Although, maybe I can do this. Or, let's see. Hmm, and that doesn't work either. I can smell the stink of Daytona Beach from here. But hello and welcome again to the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show here on YouTube. My name, the one and only Hobo Tom. And you are watching, again, the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show here on YouTube. Where I like to talk a little bit about wrestling. Every so often I am joined by my girlfriend. Again, in about two weeks, I have some programming news for you folks. So you definitely want to stay tuned. Oh, let me center. Oh, wow, my hair's floppy. I need a haircut one day. But I'm not here to talk about haircuts. First thing I would like to say, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can also email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, there's a lot of wrestling to talk about. Um, I put up my previous video this morning. About my NXT TakeOver and Survivor Series review. Both of which, at the TakeOvers are always good. People were saying that this is the best TakeOver. I don't, it's not the best TakeOver. It's good. Don't get me wrong. Not necessarily the best. It was, it was a really good, really super solid, a really fun show. Um, Survivor Series, I actually think held its own. Um, there, of course, there's there's now the internet controversy of Rog being undefeated when they actually lost one. Probably the one match they were going to lose was the tag team, but because it's on the pre-show, it doesn't count. So I'm here to talk about some. Monday. So again, you can watch that video. You can watch a whole bunch of videos. This is, again, Thanksgiving week. Whole bunch of wrestling going on. In my previous video, I have today's video, which is where I talk about Monday Night Raw. So let's get things rolling. So we start off Monday Night Raw, and Baron Corbin comes out, starts to talk smack about how Raw went undefeated, and then Stephanie, and then he invites Stephanie McMahon. So again, we have a showing. And then Braun Strowman comes out because he's like, time for you, Baron Corbin. You are going to get these hands. And, and that's how it kind of starts off. And then Baron Corbin says, no, we're, good. we're not going to do this now. We're going to save this for tables, ladders, and chairs, which is coming up in December. And I want to see I only have a few more days left on my live stream suspension. So, might do Wrestle Kingdom. Wow, that would be pretty cool. Did a review on Wrestle Kingdom. I have to see what day that is. That kind of work schedule. And I'll talk about a little bit about some other programming this later. More towards the end. But Braun's like, you know what, we're going we're gonna to have a, a three-on-one. Because two other people did didn't compete in that match, and we're still standing. Let's have a, a three. Let's have a handicap match of Braun versus Lashley and Drew McIntyre. Almost makes sense. Steph said, "Eh, eh. We're going to have Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, and Elias versus Corbin, Lashley." And Drew McIntyre. Holla holla, baby! It's gonna be one of those and squash um, debacle things. Oh, and by the way, hi, Sebastian. I think that's what the card said. And also, there's gonna be some involved for TLC, so it's gonna be fairly interesting. You're going to have, again, Baron Corbin versus Braun Strowman at TLC. If Braun wins, he gets a, a universal title shot against 
Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. Now, if Corbin wins, he is going to be a Raw general manager for life. So we'll see what happens. Hey, it's fun. Even though you can kind of guess what's going to happen, it's always good to have some kind of stakes involved. Again, so we start off our match. Um, it's, it's kind of a fun match. Um, Braun and Bruce stare down each other. Both of them are huge. Braun is a thick guy. He's also pretty tall, too. Drew McIntyre. He's just a muscular dude. If I was Drew McIntyre, I would just walk around in my wrestling tights everywhere. And here in Florida, you can do that. Not so much Scotland or the Northeast. Unless you're really brave. Not afraid of catching a cold. Cold up there. I think it was. It was this is a comfortable time in Florida. It's about 70 degrees. It gets down to a nice sleepy temperature of about 68 degrees. Oh, fuzzy blanket. And a kitten at my feet. That's the way to sleep. So, but again, um. It was pretty. It was fun, especially the standoff between those two. Then it got to be Lashley and Finn. Again, it was awesome. This was a new matchup, so I'm kind of looking forward to see what they actually do with this, or if it's just going to be kind of a one-off thing. And of course, Elias gets in there, and because this is actually an elimination match, very similar to the Survivor Series. Again, yeah, um, Finn is actually is the first one who gets eliminated. He just gets, gets, gets whooped by both Lashley and then eats a Claymore from Drew. So he gets a pinfall. Then it's a three on two. Elias turns his attention more so on Leo Rush and actually gets counted out. Now, it's a three on one. Braun's a big dude. Elias, Lashley, and Corbin. They're not small guys, though. So again, it was, it was really fun. And it was it, it was a fun match. It was, it was a good opening cheeseburger match. The only really problem I had with this, again, it did have some stakes involved. So it kind of made all three men have history. The only problem, we got to fill the death to finish, baby. You know what that means, folks? Nobody wins. Because I was saying, Lashley brought in the chair and just whacked Braun with it. They did team up on Braun and they, <laughs> I love how they put it. He has a shattered elbow. Now, I'll go on my little teacher rant and rave because I did study biology. You can't see him, but one day, one day I'll give you the hobo tour of the office, and I do have, do have some nice sheepskins up there. But you can't shatter the elbow. Okay? The elbow, by definition, is a joint. So therefore, it's already broken. You can shatter, however... The humerus or the radius and ulna. They are bones. They're solid. Elbow, eh eh. Joint. Again, if you ever have to butcher meat, the quickest way to cut through something is you cut through a joint. Tendons are a lot easier to cut through than going through bone or even like, like thick muscle. Again, you can, di now, now you can, now you can dislocate an elbow. Sucks. I think yeah, you can you can hyperextend it, you can dislocate it, but you can't shatter it or break it because by definition, again, there's a break here already in bones. I want to say it's like right here because if you hit the wrong, if you hit it like if you hit nail that the like the, the, the funny bone, it's not so funny because that's like bone on wood contact. And that's not good. I'm developing some bone contact in the shoulder. Because it's getting really stiff. 
Killed or I dislocated twice. Painful stories. But, again, let's get back to wrestling. You don't need to hear about the hobo's medical history. So then we have a Seth promo about Dean. Dean shows up. I don't know, he's just all throughout the, the, the building. Then you have the Boss and Hugs connection of Bailey and Sasha Banks versus Tamina and Nia Jax. And I'll, I'll just say this. Tamina's outfit looks makes her look like a Klingon. Like from Star Trek. The, the old school Klingon. Um, yeah, the old school Worf Klingons. Not the real old, old school. Not the OG Klingons who are just like very tan men with long mustaches and, and beards. Actually goatees and like long Fu Man shoes. These are the, the OG Klingon like battle armor of probably the Star Trek movies. Not and next generation. And everything probably up to maybe an enterprise and you start kinda of nodding off. But that's that that's for some other show. I think there's the Four Lights podcast by Steve here. You can watch that. I think I've seen a couple episodes of it. I think I saw one episode. It's the infamous episode where, <laughs> well, again, we'll save that for I'm trying to keep this right. I know my girlfriend likes it. Who is a somewhat famous photographer now. She does like it when I keep things a little bit more family friendly. Just like NXT. Sometimes. So again, with the Boston next connection, they took on Tamina and Nia Jax. This was a weird match because I figured there would be too much power, but again, Sasha and Bailey do have that speed, and they have been teaming together longer. Although I still think Tamina and Nia Jax are still related somehow, somewhere along the Moen family tree, they're probably all related somehow. But they're pretty closer related. Maybe cousins, I think. But then again, Bailey uses the quickness and she's the more agile. Bailey's really lanky. Especially when she, she dove between the legs of Nia Jax. Again, showing off that quickness. Um, I figured that when I saw this match, I'm like, this is going to be like a squash match. It was actually fairly competitive. You know, it was a good, solid match. Yeah, and if you're going to have a good, solid match, you're going to make it seem realistic. You're going to highlight your strengths, trying to hide your weaknesses. But if you have just one team that's overpowering and they win, that makes sense. I like things that make sense. Therefore, if it makes sense, this is a cheeseburger match. And you have more things of, of, of Charlie interviewing Seth, I think. And Dean shows up on like the TV set. And actually, this was actually a really wrestling-heavy episode. Um, They did have some highlights from Survivor Series. Um, probably one of the kind of the lesser matches. Um, Lucha House Party versus Revival. Lucha House Party, they're fun. I like that. They bring the, the Pinata Penelope, which is pretty cool. And because there's three of them, it's a tag match, but all three allow, are, are allowed to wrestle. There's only two members of the Revival. That's a handicap match. Or it could be one of those weird Lucha tag matches. If you ever just want to be entertained and be like wowed by athletics, by athleticism, speed, and just chaos, Go watch, like, the Univision Sports Channel. I forget what it was. But, like, 2 in the morning, I think, on a Saturday, Friday or Saturday. And they show literally, like, I think it's CMLA. I know there's AAA and CMLA. I think it is CMLA. But they feel like they fill hockey arenas all the time. Or actually, uh, they're even bigger than hockey arenas. 
pretty cool though to watch. And it's a really fun match. You have to love the Lucha style. It's fast and fun. They, the three of them seem to really be enjoying themselves. And if you want to see some, some Lucha Libre action, and tune in later when I do my own Survivor Series of Los Luchas versus El Gringos. That should be interesting. Um, the Revival. My, my only qualm about this is that why do they keep on jobbing out? It makes sense, though. It's fun, too, and it's a true clash of styles. Again, this is a really fun, good cheeseburger match. Then we get to a Ronda Rousey promo. Eh, that's so so. I mean, she's making leaps and bounds with her wrestling and her promos. I do like the fact that she drops that B word every so often. Be careful about that. Even um, Dean was cursing a little bit towards the end. And this was actually a show with a hard out. So the USA Network, they have dropped the hammer. On the WWE saying, no more run over. You're done in 11. Out you go. Probably it's more for the house show to enjoy. So again, it kind of adds a thing. It's like, you can actually see it live and you get more of the experience. Versus just actually watching on TV. Whereas football is almost more fun. Especially at the, well, especially at the pro level. To sit in front of a big TV if, if you have to, if you get cable. Unlike hobos. And you can have a cold frosty root beer. Root beer is good and tasty. Mm. And chill out, have some pizza, cheeseburger, whatever. Um, so this led, to, this led us to the next match where it's Ronda Rousey versus Mickey James. Uh, Mickey really seemed stiff with Rousey. There was a, that, that opening jacket toss. But Rousey didn't seem to like that. Um, again, Mickey seemed stiff because I think Ronda Rousey every so often would, would kind of rub like her lip. Again, if you bust a lip on accident, things happen in the ring. Um, again, dropping the B word left and right. It was, both of them, they had their moments where it could have been DQ, the ref. Pull them out of the corner. Um, each that happened one, and after like a few strikes by Mickey James, it really wasn't a wrestling match. It was just a striking match, with the exception of the Piper's Pit, which is like a modified some twisting Samoan and drop. Um, Ron Rousey hit that three times, pinned Mickey James. This was a ham sandwich match. This led as Ronda Rousey's going back up the stage with her belt. Nia Jax walks down. There's a little stare down. That was okay. Then you have another weird match. And I always keep on forgetting his name. I keep on remembering it was Rockstar Spud. But in previous episodes, they, there were a whole bunch of pee jokes. Because Rockstar Spud. Oh, shoot. I forgot to do that, too. The Rockstar Spud peed his pants when the. Big Show was going to choke slam him. Again, they're in the catering line. <laughs> hey, Pete. Yeah, that really, you're in. Ah! Again, all, all the other jokes. Why can't I can never remember his name? I just remember him as Rockstar Spud. All right. So again, we had Rude versus Gable versus the Authors of Pain. And again, this was, this was fun. Um... AOP still have the, they have great tag team chemistry. They know how to double team. They know kind of the ideas. You isolate the guy, you hold him there, your partner hits him. Then you tag in. It was kind of like a fluky win, though. I mean, it just seemed like a really basic match from the two. Uh, Gable won when he rolled up Acom, I think. Made AOP look weak? This is a ham sandwich match. I mean, Ross is really having a problem in that second hour. 
especially going to the third hour, like from like hour two to two thirty, just like 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 dead filler stuff. Then the, let, let us, I guess, the main match of the night, where it was Natalia versus Ruby Wright. And this was the first time that I noticed that Ruby Wright has has a reverse tramp stamp. It was good. Um, I don't think these two could really put on a bad match. I mean, Ruby Wright did actually new moves. This was a really good, fun match. Natalia's still upset at the fact that Ruby broke her father's sunglasses. Again, you have all three members. Sarah Logan still has to figure out the time on when to get in the ring, though. She's 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 not good at that. But again, Ruby Riot and Natalia, they can put on a good match anywhere. I mean, this was actually probably the best match of the night. Besides the opening match. That was more fun. But this was a really good technical wrestling match. And these two can really put on a clinic. I've never doubted Ruby Riot, Heidi Lovelace. Has been around wrestling forever. Natalia's Remember the Hart family dungeon. I mean, geez, her uncle Bret Hart, her her un her father is the anvil. I'm, I'm sure there was Bruce Hart. I think was another one. He probably remembers her other uncle Owen. When, again, unfortunately, passed away. But um, then Stu Hart, her. Great uncle? Or something like that. Yeah, because that was Bret Hart's father, uncle. Yeah, great uncle, I guess. Some some familiar relations. Yeah, this was really fun. Um, there was a point where he had the three-on-one. The numbers game came into play. Um, again, distracting the referee. Uh, Natalia had Ruby to write and the, sh and the sharpshooter. Uh, Sarah Logan distracts the referee, allowing Liv Morgan to pull. Ruby to Riot out of the ring. Then you go back in. Ruby to Riot tried to cheat. Ruby to Riot, there is something called hubris. You try to cheat, you will lose. Because she tried to roll up Natalia, and it's weird because she tried to grab the tights. Natalia wears that whole latex bodysuit thing. How you get a hold of it? Not like you can just grab a fistful of tights. It's weird. But Natalia reversed that into a roll-up of her own. Natalia wins, and this was a really fun match. And I, th I think in all of that, this is going to be the surf and turf match. Again, it was a really fun match. And then you have a Seth and Dean... Um... Show showdown in, in the ring, Seth. Dean, for some reason, likes to hang out by forklifts. Have you ever noticed that? Dean and forklifts are like synonymous. That's weird. And then Seth, of course, was he teased to leave, came back, confronted Dean, ran past Gorilla. Um, he got the upper hand quickly on Dean. Dean hit Dean Dean regained the upper hand, hit the dirty deeds, started to pose and mock Seth, like have Seth talk and stuff. But, I mean, overall, it was really a fun episode of Raw. Um, again, with Raw, three hours is long. I do like the fact that they have the hard outs here, like, oh, they're going to wrap this up pretty soon. Which is good. Um, that, that, there's that weird lull, though, and just kind of like drains the energy out of the show. But for the most part, it was a pretty fun thing. And as far as some programming notes go, so this is going to be posted probably as soon as I can, probably sometime tonight or tomorrow morning. On Tuesday, going to again have the Mix Max Challenge and SmackDown review. I'm going to go and try and post that <coughs> probably Tuesday night ish, again, real early Wednesday morning. Um, Wednesday, I kind of got my work schedule changed. Wait a second. Oh, yeah, I could still. I don't know, probably more, more so. The Wednesday again, there's no Lucha under. I'm banned in some countries. Wow. 
<laughs> I think I should feel special about that. I am banned in viewing countries. That's almost cool. And then Thursday, going to make and try to post Thursday my own Thanksgiving Day special where I have a whole bunch of matches going on. Where did I put my little note paper? There's somewhere. Darn it. Going to have, again, kind of a couple survival or elimination style matches. Again, you have the five faces of Tom versus Sting and the various Undertakers. Going to have Luchas versus El Gringos, the Keller Boys versus Taj and a mystery partner. The Four Faces of Heather versus the Four Horsewomen. And then Diamondback Jack Maverick versus El Vagabundo Dos Hobo for the Under the Bridge Championship. And then what's Hobo Tom doing? Hobo Tom. I know what I'm doing. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. Bye.